Hey, this is a match once again. We're about to have videos, another paid request, this time for Toby. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested to request any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And Toby wanted me to talk about the 1973 documentary named Manson. Now, the title pretty much tells you what it's about. Of course, about... Charlie Manson and his group of people. This is after most of them have been arrested. And it's a lot of interviews from people at that time who were either part of the cult and they left or some that were still with the cult. Which, I don't know how they got these interviews, how it came about, but they talked to some of Charlie Manson's women and they're batshit crazy. They're fruitier than Fruit Loops. They're cornier than corn puffs their their eggs are not all in one basket yet the brain cells have left the building uh, the light bulb is pretty damn dim in fact it's broken yet they think it's still on and uh, they're, they're psycho psycho bitches <laughs> I'll say that I would say that's the one interesting thing about watching this is seeing firsthand how fucking crazy these people are. Now I wouldn't say I found much information out that I didn't know before. I think if you had followed the case at all. Or if you had seen stuff like Helter Skelter. The Charlie Manson film with Steve Railsback. Which is a pretty good one. Again. You're not hearing anything you haven't heard before. Even the bits in the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Quentin, Tar Quentin Tarantino's film, where part of it is about the, the Manson cult. Because <clears throat> you have the movie theater, you have the blind guy that ran the, the movie ranch, I should say, that theater. It spawns movie ranch, and the they don't interview the, the blind guy. <clears throat> I wonder if they tried and he just said no or something, but... It's a lot of home video footage of what Manson and his group would do, which is pretty much just be naked, have fun with each other, and a lot of their kind of point of view. Which again, I don't know if I could say I really learned anything from it. It was interesting to see one time at least. There's no actors. What are Charlie Manson's women at the beginning? He's talking about how we're going to pick up as many kids, move them to the desert, and kill anyone that's in our way. And introduces like all the, the real footage and pictures of the people involved, like Charlie Manson, that crazy some bitch, Susan Atkins, Patricia Krenwinkel, Leslie Van Houten, Tex Watson, Stephen Grogan, and more. You do hear a little bit from the DA. I kind of wish we heard even more from him. Um, I think that would be more interesting if it was more from his point of view. And him kind of taking us along on this journey. He mentioned how at the time, because this was made in 73, hence the date. At the time, this was the most expensive trial it was a million dollars it was the longest trial at the time nine and a half months uh the death of sharon tate and others and there was like 169 stab wounds there were seven murders paid was in Sha uh, sharon tate's blood It was interesting to see, like you said, firsthand how these folks were. Like the, I guess the women, I don't know if they had not been arrested yet or if they were not convicted yet because they weren't part of the MERS, but they're part of the cult. So while Charlie and the others are arrested, they're kind of sitting there and these three girls got these guns and they're polishing them and they're talking about how you have to make love to it. Girls with guns. It reminds me of that commercial in Jackie Brown. Where Sam Jackson showing Rob De Niro about the the girls and the the guns. Except, waste every motherfucker in the room except no substitutes. <laughs> it 
It was interesting to hear from the guy, Paul Watkins. He was a flower child. He fled the pack. And about... He very much a hippie. But even though he was very much a hippie, he was still talked in the sense of the fact of, you know, Charlie kept talking about love and love, but there's no love in death. Love is life. So, you know, Charlie's saying all this stuff, but it was hypocritical. He didn't use the word hypocritical, but that's what it truly was and truly is. And that apparently Charlie Manson, he wanted to start a black-white war because he thought that eventually there was going to be a civil war between blacks and whites and that blacks would win and that when the blacks would win then the few white that were left Charlie would come out and be like well actually you guys can't really govern so you'll need me to help govern and he'd be the benef beneficiary of the war so if he killed someone like Sh Sharon Tate and others or got his people to do it they write words like pig that eventually that would mean people would think that well the milit black militants must have killed these white people obviously that didn't work out a lot of home movies of the ranch the waterfalls them butt ass naked charlie manson never id'd himself as a hippie he was against hippies about how among the the ranch he would order women to get pregnant and even the kids that were there, they would raise the kids there. They would not go to the doctors for kids. What was the line? The, the doctor's only good for curing herpes. Was it? Or curing... Uh, I think that was the line. The doctor's only good for curing herpes. Something like that. So they would have the kids there. And even the kids might have been with drugs and orgies. Jesus Christ. Another thing that kind of... Actually, this is different. This one made me laugh. This guy's just talking about drugs like hashish, mescaline, opium. But we didn't mess around with the hard drugs. <laughs> I'm like, those aren't the hard drugs? Opium and fucking mescaline? Like, those aren't the hard drugs? You do hear a little bit from Ronnie Howard, who was in the same cell as Susan Atkins and heard the story. And she's the one that made the phone call and helped break the story on what the Manson family had done. And she even puts up a paper and says, by the time you see this documentary, I'm probably not going to be alive. Well, she was, but sadly, I think she passed away in 1979, I think. I think that was the year. Like a cab driver killed her something like that. it was very weird uh, and you hear a little bit from other people who were in cells with some of Manson's women and and, and folks I uh, probably the most fucked up story and you did tell that the the cellmate the, the former cellmate was a bit disturbed by the story she heard from one of these women about how one of the Manson family was so adamant what's going on he wanted to climb mats and die at the same time so he and one of the Manson girls are fucking and as they're getting close he shoots himself as he climaxes and she climaxes and that apparently the Manson girl said, man, this is really groovy, and went to kiss the guy and got blood in her mouth. I mean, you describe this stuff, I mean, it sounds like a horror movie. It truly does. Sounds like a fucking horror movie. Because it was a horror movie. I mean, let's be honest, it was. And then some of these women were guns. They're talking about how, well, you made us this way, you media. We watched... You know, TV shows like combat and westerns. And, you know, what's there about killing, killing, killing? I'm saying there's no one... Yeah, but you're murdering, you're murdering 
innocent people, including babies. Because people forget Sharon Tate was pregnant. And you tell, like, the interviewer is, like, trying to state the fact of, well, what about her baby? Like, you, you women killed a baby who wasn't even born yet. And, like, they try to explain it, but you just look at them and the lights aren't home behind their eyes. Behind their eyes, the lights are not home. Done for love of brother. Done for love of brother. But they don't know, like, they say this stuff as a mantra. They, they, they say this stuff because Charlie Manson repeated it to them. But it's like they truly don't know what the fuck they're saying. It's like this drug-induced hypnosis. And the throughout the dynamic, keeps reiterating how, you know, some of these girls, they were just, they were A students. One wanted to be a psychiatrist, you know, in school. And... Like, they were so angry to be at home, but yet they went to this ranch where they were also told to sew and do work. And yet, I still didn't get the idea of how Manson had this power over people. Even though this is the people who was with him, talked with him, I still didn't understand. Maybe because I'm actually fucking sane, so... I guess if I did understand, I'd be insane. But no, I still don't understand how this guy had this power. Because you look at the guy, and it's like he's a fuddly looking guy. It's not like he's a Brad Pitt looking guy. He's articulate and speaking. Because he he's not interviewed, but you see him talk a few times throughout it. And you know, there's the bit where you put the the cross. And he thinks he's Jesus, and his minions think, yeah, he's Jesus, and hey, if they tell him he wins, because he'll die for our sins again, and if they let him go, we win. So maybe that's why you know, they're like, fuck it, well, you don't be here forever, and we're going to win. Maybe that's why he... But... It just, you what? It was... To get a first-hand look at just how over the bridge these people are. And the home movies of them frolicking naked among the, the movie ranch. And, uh, you know, the narrator, you know, dictating about how, you know, these were nice, you know, they were straight-A students. And then a lot of drugs... A lot of listening to Manson about love, 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 even though you're killing. But then they're like, well, you know, there are people that are sent into Vietnam and they die. And we're, you know. I'm like, what does that have to do with the people you killed? Did they, were they the ones that sent them to Vietnam? But you, know, you can't be using common sense because common sense is illegal with these people. It's not in their brain waves. It's so fucking stupid. They would take an umbrella. They don't see purple rain. They're just fucking idiots. <clears throat> Sometimes it felt like the documentary wasn't as well structured as it could have been. Sometimes it felt like it was either lolly gadding around. Or kind of floundering between talking with this person, this person. I kind of wish it had more of a smoother flow of a structure for a documentary. Like this is where it began. Then this time said here. Then this time said here. But kind of just a lot of showing home video footage. And to be honest, for a while, they got a bit old. In fact... There's a documentary that I think I had watched, someone had requested as well. I have to give it like a 45 minute one or or maybe the same length as this. And I got the same information, but it, I remember it flowed better. And I forget what it was called. But I'm sitting there going, well, I, I, would, just, I would much rather just watch a newer documentary. This is interesting if you want to see an addendum of seeing the home movies. If you want to see a bit of 
And if you're wondering, there's people, you know, talking over there. They're just uh, families over, so they're conversing about dinner. I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'll eat anything right now. <laughs> but uh, they, uh, it's one of those things where nowadays, if you watch this, there's a lot more better, tighter paced documentaries. Here, it's interesting because it was done at the time when there was fresh. A lot of these people were interviewed right off the bat that have either passed away now or passed away soon after or are not around anymore or nowadays would never be interviewed they want to be far away but to see these ladies with the guns polishing them and being proud and the crazy shit they say to see some of the interviews like the the guys who left the pack and even the people that were there and why they listen to manson or they're trying to explain as to how uh I probably would have liked to have heard even more from Ronnie Howard. I would like to have heard a bit more from the, the DA. Uh, but maybe like the sheriffs at that time, the, the officials, law, cops of that time. I know that was a weird way to structure that sentence. But uh, like I said, if it was... I wish there was a better structure flow to the document. But overall, it was interesting to watch at least one time. I see if you want to get more of a concrete look at it, there, I don't know what the the name of the channel or company that made it, but there's plenty of documentaries out there about Charlie Manson. But like I said, if you want to see interviews at the time and the, the whole movies, it's if you're really really that interested in the case. It's interesting to watch on that front. So there you go. With some pretty either creepy stories or just fuck just fucked behavior of these insane people. Insane. Fuck you know. So that's Seth. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.